Hello and welcome to another episode of Off The Clock. I'm your host, Sierra Jones. Today we have the legendary and Huntsville royalty Delvin Sullivan and his beautiful wife, Felicia. We're gonna get to know Delvin a little bit and hear about all the amazing things he does, not only in Huntsville, but surrounding areas. Welcome back. Now, Delvin, I know who you are, but those who are watching, tell us, who is Delvin Sullivan? I'm Delvin Sullivan from Huntsville, Alabama, born and raised, um, product of Sparkman Homes Housing Development, uh, which was no, better known as Mason Court. Um, my, me and my mom probably spent around 24 years there. Uh, my mom just passed away uh, recently. God bless her soul. Uh, <clears throat> as I said, we spent 24 years there, but I spent a lot of time while living there at the Boys and Girls Club, um, which allowed me to hone the skills that eventually led me to be in what's now the Madison County uh, Sports Hall of Fame. Um, also gave me the tutelage I needed to academically get to the point to where um, I'm I own a master's degree from Murray State, or a bachelor's degree from Alabama a and University, master's degree from Murray State. Uh, after going through that process, finishing the great Butler High School mm -hmm. as a um, one of the top seniors, that's what I tell people. Of course. Whether you can go dig that up is not <laughs> uh, important. But um, I left there, went off to college, spent two years at University of North Alabama, left there and transferred to Alabama A&M. Um, I played football at the University of North Alabama. Um, once I got to Alabama A&M though, I decided to join the basketball team and the track track team. So in 1995, 96 season altogether, I had the opportunity to play on a SIAC championship basketball mm -hmm. team, run track and field on the SIAC track and field team and in football, I actually made first team all SIAC myself. Wow. So pretty successful season, uh, that little time frame for me. So after finishing at Alabama and m graduated, went into the United States Army as a logistician. Mm -hmm. Did two tours, did eight years there, two tours to Iraq. Um, got out in 2006. Ran my own, started my own company, which I still operate, called Clean Solutions. Um, had a break in work. I took a job. They had a layoff. Did my company full time, and then I was offered a job to come work for the Army Contracting Command. And now I'm a senior contracting officer for the United States Army Contracting Command. Wow. Ooh. I, I, I'm I'm taking it all in because I'm in the midst of like Huntsville royalty right here. Mm. Yes, I'll say it for you. Okay. Um, but look, you mentioned about the you played basketball, football, and track. Did you play all three of those sports in high school too, or just in college? Yes, I played all three at while I was at Butler basketball, football, and uh, track and field. Matter of fact, my senior year, I was all state in football. Mm -hmm. Um, all city in basketball and MVP of the city in track and field. Wow. Now, what was your favorite sport? Track. And, really? And the reason track was my favorite sport is because that I knew I had a God given talent, but I, I could take that and the amount of work, apply the amount of work, and it still resonates with me uh, to this day that if I take what God gave me, and put some work into it, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard for anybody to beat me. And then if somebody did beat me, it's because they probably were blessed with more talent or they worked harder. And I'm not the person who allow you to work harder than me, which is kind of why I operate that I do now. So if I go into a situation and if somebody beat me, if you got a job mm -hmm. or you landed a contract, it's probably because you outworked me. And I'm trying to make sure that doesn't happen. Wow, oh, that's awesome. Now, I heard that you were not if the, but one of the best wide receivers the Huntsville has seen. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little about that, because I think you also had an opportunity, uh, you had an agent mm -hmm. um, as well. Yeah, um, 
like I said, in, in high school, I finished first team all state. Mm -hmm. um, I was all city for, I think, three years. And then once I got to uh, Alabama a and I actually finished my senior year as first team all SIAC. So mm -hmm. that caused me to have some rankings. So I received a letter from the NFL telling me that I was a potential draft pick, um, which caused me <clears throat> to eventually stop playing basketball in my senior year at A&M because I had signed with an agent. So mm. um, that was a a good good run. I, I think I tell folks, I just met some young men at a class that I was teaching the other day. They told me they played wide receiver. Mm -hmm. And I told them that if they, I asked them who do they think the last 6A wide receiver from North Alabama was. And they couldn't figure out because they figured if, if he can't be talking about us because he looked like a tight end <laughs> offensive lineman. And I said, just Google it, then you'll find that it's me. So, and they're probably like, what? Yeah, they were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is awesome. Well, look, also tell us about you were in the military. How many years and then what, what branch were you in? Eight years, the United States Army. Um, like I said, I did two tours. I did Operation Iraqi Freedom One and Operation Iraqi Freedom Four with the 101st out of Fort Campbell. Mm -hmm. So uh, a total of eight years, about five months. Okay. And then, because you, you wear so many hats, so you also mentioned about your cleaning bit, your floor cleaning business. Mm -hmm. How did that start and how long have you been doing that? Well, I knew when I got ready to get out of the Army that I wanted to be in a business. So while I was in Iraq, I was actually studying what was called Jan Pro, it's a cleaning franchise, which and uh, so when I got out, I bought the first Jam Pro franchise in North Alabama as a commercial cleaning company. Mm -hmm. um, some things didn't quite go the way I wanted there, so I just branched off and started Cleaning Solutions, which I still own and operate now. The bulk of the business is carpet cleaning, mm -hmm. um, but we do make ready cleaning, tile and grout several other things so but yeah so it's been in operations for about 13 years and it's not just you you have a team right well i, I bring the team in as needed so ah, I, don't, okay. I don't keep a, okay i don't keep a full crew at all times okay mm -hmm. so is there anything you don't do <laughs> 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 I, I, hey if it's like i said my you know i finished um second place in the state decathlon twice in high school oh. when i got home though to, to to not to tell you about me finishing second place there <laughs> but when i got home with the second time and i showed my mom the plaque she said baby that's nice but don't be don't be happy with finishing second hmm. so i've been a hard charge ever since so to answer my question, he can do everything. Uh, <laughs> last thing before we bring your wife in here. So mm -hmm. what do you, so when you're not uh, doing the wealthy child and floor cleaning and all the above, what do you do in your free time? My free time now is, is my grandkids. Hmm. Uh, playing with my granddaughter as much as I can. And if not that, you catch me out there in my uh, man cave smoking on a good cigar yeah um watching tv i mean at this point i put in i put in a lot of work put a lot of miles on my body so i just try to enjoy uh family friends and a good cigar yeah, yeah. before we go tell us is there any advice that you would give someone that is wanting to start their own business or even just in general, want to be an entrepreneur like like you are. What advice would you give them? Yes, um, it would be master the three keys of what I teach all adults and children to success of business. That's understanding the finance. So it means you understand how much money it takes for you to operate your business, mm -hmm. how much money it takes for you to maintain your lifestyle. Master marketing, whether it takes a commercial posting on social media, whatever it takes for you to get what you don't have in regards to that finance piece. And then last but not least is the operations. As I tell most children, what do they mean by uh, the operation piece? You show up and show out. 
So if you have a lemonade stand, you sell the best lemonade. Mm -hmm. If you're selling Nikes, you make sure you sell a shoe, a quality shoe that the world loves. Same principles. I like that. I like that. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for this time. And we'll be right back with his beautiful wife, Miss Felicia. the beautiful Miss Felicia Sullivan. So tell me this. So Delvin has so many different hats. How do you keep up with them? How, how do you how do you go about it? Actually, we have a calendar system that's on the oh. refrigerator. <laughs> Besides that, it's usually a daily phone call. Honey, you got cleanings today. What's going on? So mm -hmm. just open communication. I like it. And is, is everything on like you like to write it down or is it on your phone, the calendar? It's on the refrigerator. On the, it's actually literally, on the, yeah. literally on the refrigerator. Oh, OK. Yep. I like that. I like that. So tell, tell us, how did you guys meet? Uh, we both worked at Adtran back in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. um, we started dating in 97, married in 98. Oh, it was quick. He, he didn't waste any time. Nope. <laughs> Start to finish, nine months. Wow, <laughs> that's beautiful. And so how many years have you guys been married? We just celebrated our 25th in May. Oh, wow. Well, happy late anniversary. Thank you. Um, what is the most romantic thing that Delvin has done for you? Well... I thought about this question long and hard. Delvin mm -hmm. does a lot for me. Mm -hmm. Many would say I'm super, super spoiled, and I agree, I am. <laughs> um, but one that really sticks out was shortly after my dad passed, I was having a rough day at work. Mm -hmm. He really didn't know it was a rough day, but he could <clears> hear it in my voice. So what he done, I sit at the corner of my office. So I heard a knock on the door. It's like, who is that knock on the door? So I go peep out, and it's him. I had mm -hmm. flowers, candy, mm -hmm. and my favorite Dr. Pepper. Oh, so, yeah, I love that. that. My day. He's really intentional. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. And one more question for you. So you guys were married while he was in the military, and I know you guys moved around a good bit. What was your favorite city? Uh, I don't know. Most people say Hawaii. Mm -hmm. We were there for three years, but I'm going to say no. I actually like Clarksville, Tennessee better. Are you serious? Now, I lived yeah. in Hawaii. What part? We was on Oahu. I was too. Yeah. When were oh, you on Oahu? 2000 and probably 2002. 2002 we to 2005. Left. We left in, 20, oh, in 2001. Wow. So you lived on um, <clears throat> Hickam Air Force Base? No, we were on, um, oh my gosh, I forgot it. Will Army Air Force Base, okay. Schofield Barracks. So you choose Clarksville, Tennessee over Hawaii? Well, we left Huntsville when I was young, 25. Okay. Only, uh, only girl, spoiled mm. by my parents, so it was hard for me to leave home. So when I first got there, I was homesick. For a long mm. time. That makes sense. The time, yeah. the time difference, and all the above. Yeah. Not only that, just being homesick, away from home for the first time, and you go all the way to Hawaii. Mm. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, last question for you: When, depending on your calendar that's on the refrigerator, <laughs> do you put time in for you? What What do you love to do for just free time or self care? Relaxing. Mm. What does that look like? Sitting right here in my favorite <laughs> spot. Watching TV. Usually I'm slid back with my feet balled up under my dress, just yeah. relaxing. Mm. I love that. I Dad love that. spending time with the grandkids. Mm. I love that. Well, thank you so much for your time. We'll be right back to hear about the wealthy child. The greatest asset we have is our employees. I'm very excited to welcome you to our new corporate website. The National Space Club was founded as the National Rocket Club in 1957. In North Alabama, we are extremely blessed. The truth home will test your theory in everything, the good things and the bad things, in everything give him facts.
Welcome back. So, if you guys will see here, here is the wealthy child. You have the book, and then you also have this workbook. So, Devin, will you tell us how this started and when this started? Well, when I first got out of the Army and came back home, I would go to the Boys and Girls Club in Spartan Homes, Mason Court, which is the neighborhood that I grew up in, and I would teach. My goal was is, you know, be that person or that one piece that I did not have as a child. And that was to actually teach financial literacy mm -hmm. to these children. Well, in that process, I learned that I can't take it. I can't go home with them. I wanted them to have a tool. So mm -hmm. I created a book and I said, while a child is laying on the floor, eating their ramen noodles, that they can say, Mr. Sullivan gave me a way to take these ramen noodles, turn it into steak, and turn this floor into a mansion. Hmm. So that's why I created the Wealthy Child. In addition to, if I was teaching 20 children, 18 of them knew someone that was either in jail or prison. Hmm. And in the first page of the book, it tells you that 80% of crimes that send people to prison have something to do with money. And I plan to, I plan to change that narrative. Hmm. And tell us about the illustration. Is this boy you, or so you guys can get another look at it? What I'm yeah, talking the, about. The, the illustrator at the time, I think that's his goal was was to find a younger, smaller mm -hmm. delve. And obviously, the number seven is in regards to the seven pillars that's in the wealthy child. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that that's kind of me. I was gonna go back and change because people were like, hey man, ain't no seven, eight, nine year old bald head. <laughs> Uh, kids out there. I said, well, I guess I'm different. Um, so, yeah, so I, I just I stuck it. with it, didn't change it up. Um, and then we're going to roll with it how it is at this And point. tell us about the lemonade stand on the, the workbook. Because the, the lemonade stand is actually the kind of premises for the book. Um, the child, the children in the book um, get a job at a lemonade. They actually mm -hmm. get a job at a lemonade company. Uh, <clears throat> And in that process, they learn to walk through the seven pillars that's in the world of the child, which is generating income, budgeting, banking, um, establishing credit, making a major purchase, investing, and the most important piece is giving back to that community. So, mm. um, and in any community, I tell all children that once you start giving, you start living. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I heard that you also have a partnership with Huntsville City Schools. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, currently, we have a contract, and I'll go in to five middle schools. Um, every one of those middle schools will, every eighth grader in Chapman, Weisberg Middle, Huntsville Middle, Morris, and McNair mm -hmm. will all get a copy of the book and workbook, and they'll actually they'll actually get an individual session taught by me twice. Mm. So. And what is what is the dream and end goal with the wealthy child? Is to just touch as many lives that I can, and to be honest with you, really change that narrative when it comes mm. to money. You know. 80% of, and it may be higher than that in the African-American community, 80% uh, of crimes that send people to prison have something to do with money. Mm -hmm. Over half of divorces in the world are caused by money. And the anxiety that makes many folks commit suicide has something to do with money. Mm -hmm. And I think if I can get this book and workbook and my tutelage in as many hands as I can or as, and in front of as many people as I can, I can change their narratives, which is which I do believe is why God put me here. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that one. And what what age groups do you want to reach the most? Is, is this for everybody? It's for, to be honest with you, it's for everybody. If okay. you have a child, and I tell people, I don't want to put a limit on age range. Because if your child can't read, then you read it to them. Mm. Um, I like if that. there's and, and I tell people to spark relationships or spark conversation, just put a piggy bank on the kitchen table, 
Tell them you did it because of the book, and every time you put some money in it, mm -hmm. you strike a conversation about money. So you put a quarter in every time people sit down at the table or dine, and the child says, Mom, why you do that? Well, then Mom's telling them about an issue she had with credit. She may have been approved or disapproved for a credit for a car, or she may just open a new bank account. Drop the penny, dime, whatever it is in there, and then have the conversation. Mm -hmm. So I just want to have change the kitchen conversations and change the narrative of people going to prison. And what if there's someone out there watching that one is because is the wealthy child a nonprofit? Like what they want to donate to this, how can they? Can they? Yes, you can actually donate at my site, which is the wealthy child dot net. Okay. Um, and you can purchase the book on my website and through Amazon. Dot com. I'm actually encouraging everyone to go to Amazon.com right now because most people purchase them from me on my site, mm -hmm. but there's really no tracking of that. So I need to, to get more tracking and get more credit for the numbers on Amazon. Then I'm encouraging folks to go out to Amazon and buy as many yeah. as you can. And if you're working with a nonprofit or any organization, group, and it can be adults or children, and you have the book, and workbook or you want to just bring me in to have a conversation you can find me on Instagram Facebook um, you on TikTok too? and TikTok okay yes. <laughs> all and all the wealthy child so yeah you can't you, the branding is there can't forget mm. it so just type in the wealthy okay. child and I'll show up and I was um because I've looked through this book a little bit and mm -hmm. looked at the first couple of chapters, I wish that the wealthy child existed when I was in college, and I was curious of: Are you um, interested in partnering with any local, like A and M or uh, UH, any local student athletes? You know, especially with the NIL, these yes. kids have more opportunities with a lot of money in their hands and not knowing how to handle it or budget it. Well, and I'm glad you asked because I just I've. I'm creating or working on what's called building a strong financial foundation and it's for teens and young adults. And it actually has a piece in it specifically for um, NIL students because what they don't realize is, is sometimes, first of all, that you need to file that 1099 income. Mm. And then in many cases, a lot of young African-American males will receive too much NIL money or too much money on the, on the 1099 and will prevent them from getting their FAFSA. So they won't be able to, won't qualify for Pell Grant. So if you took mm -hmm. the money, you had a good year, they thought you was going to have a good year, you didn't have it, now the next year they're not giving it, but you have to claim that income, which called, keeps you from getting your Pell Grant. So the people who thought you was going to be this good and great athlete, mm -hmm. they're no longer funding you, and then the money that they did give you keeps you from getting assistance. Mm. So they don't think about that going in. So I plan on, that's one of the reasons I cr I'm creating this new document. I like that's going to be really beneficial, especially with these college athletes in the NIL. Yeah. Um, last question for you. So I know I've read this little part about the piggy bank. If there is any child right now watching and mm -hmm. they have no clue how to start off with saving or anything like that, where would you, and they haven't read your book yet, what would you tell them to do? Where do they need to start? I would tell them to get a piggy bank. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, How I much they the need parent, to put in the piggy bank? I, I would and, and tell them to always pay themselves. For, I tell them to get a piggy bank and tell them whenever you get birthday money, Christmas, whatever it is, pay yourself first. That means you take a bit of that money. They're not gonna quite, they don't quite understand pay yourself 10%, mm -hmm. but they do understand pay yourself first. So put something in that piggy bank mm -hmm. that you don't plan on spending anywhere else. So I tell children, put the money in, the, put your piece, pay yourself in the piggy bank, get the rest to your parents, and you allow them to be your bank because many kids are not going to the bank or they don't have bank accounts. Mm -hmm. And you tell mom that every time I want something, I want to fill out a piece of paper, I'm going to give you a withdrawal slip, you give that back to me so I can practice moving my money because Mr. Sullivan told me that a child who has a bank account or one that understands the transaction that mm -hmm. process is process is four times more likely to be successful financially than the one that doesn't. Hmm. So 
That's really piggy good. Bank. Mm -hmm. Well, kids, you know what to do now. Go get you a piggy bank. And just to repeat, you need, let's go help Devin out and go to Amazon and you can purchase the book and also this workbook. You can also visit him on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Hello Huntsville is a weekly lifestyle audio and video podcast produced in studio and on location to showcase Huntsville's best activities, entertainment, neighborhoods, and all the unique attractions that make the Rocket City one of the top cities to live in the nation. Our primary audience is adults who live, work, play, and innovate in the Huntsville metro area. And each episode will feature Cynthia Joyner in conversation with business owners, decision makers, elected officials, and some of the city's most compelling personalities telling the stories of her hometown. Whether you're local, new in town, or just passing through, Hello Huntsville will have something for you. Welcome back. Delvin, I have one more question that I forgot. Mm -hmm. So with The Wealthy Child, is this also for adults as well? Well, the, the book, there are some things that, you, that adults can actually use, but I actually teach adults separately from children. So I'm a, I'm a Ramsey certified master coach. Mm -hmm. And what I do for adults is I ease the anxiety that comes along with earning, saving, and growing the dollar. Hmm. And what I do for children is I introduce them to the world's economic process. Okay. Well, you guys heard it. It's for all ages. Now, Devin, will you tell us again where we can purchase The Wealthy Child and where people can directly get in contact with you? I'm encouraging everyone to go to Amazon.com, order your book, workbook. Please leave a um, review. And you can find me on The Wealthy Child, on The Wealthy Child on Facebook, The Wealthy Child on Instagram. The world of child on TikTok. Well, thank you both for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Join us next week for Seasons Off the Clock. <laughs>